right guys, this is Dawn and I'm standing here in Peter Street Station. Um, so let's talk about that artist, Maya Bailey, who is standing next to me. What is Peter Street Station? Well, it's a community art center. It's going to be based off, you know, the artists of Atlanta. It's going to be a place where artists can come and create artwork. We have a full library, we have a coffee house, we have an art gallery here, um, sculpture, pottery, and after school art program for children and youth. That's awesome. Now, you were telling me that this is actually three floors. Now, yeah. I know we can't take a look at all three floors, but tell yeah. us what to expect in the future. Well, on, on, the, on the main floor will be the library, coffee house, event space. And then the back, well, the same floor, it's right in the behind uh, mm -hmm. the bookshelf. We've got mm -hmm. the art gallery, and then the, the very back room is pottery mm -hmm. and sculpture. Mm -hmm. And then downstairs will be a, a podcast and lounge, and then we have a recording studio in the back. And then upstairs, it's an art incubator for members only. Mm -hmm. And it will incorporate photographers, illustrators, painters, and tattoo artists. Awesome. And awesome. chef. And a and chef. chef. And a chef. Yeah. So you get to eat here, too. Not only just grab a cup of coffee. And well, you got to be a member to get the food. Upstairs. Okay, you got to be a member to get the food. So <laughs> this no, the coffee no house. Food the, the no coffee. food on the first floor. No, no. Not a just coffee. <laughs> Okay, so let's so let's talk about your journey. How did Maya Bailey get to this point? Um, just hooking up with my friends, man. We, <laughs> I mean, everybody got a talent, and so you know, like, uh, I guess my gift is kind of picking out talent, mm -hmm. and then everybody play a part, mm -hmm. and that's how I, that's how we got here as a whole, I guess, mm -hmm. you know. And then you know, once we get to a certain point, where everybody you know on their feet, mm -hmm. and then everybody branch out and do their own thing. And then we come back and unify for like the anniversary shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So talk about your growth as an artist personally. Um, talk about how long it's taken you to get to get to this point. And then from a business standpoint, how where you've noticed the talents in your friends and you all have made money together. Well, I mean, I've been an art my whole, my artist my whole life. My mother discovered when I was around like two, mm -hmm. and then I started really going full fledged artist, hundred percent for a career around when I was like ten years old, mm -hmm. and. I never really had a job or anything. I just been doing art to make a living mm -hmm. and supporting myself. And then I moved to Atlanta in '94. Went to the Art Institute of Atlanta. Okay. Hooked up with like artists like uh, Tuki Carter and uh, Craig Singleton mm -hmm. and Goldie Gold, Sam Basila, Bless the Soul, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of uh, artists, man, from that era. And we all hooked together and we did shows because art galleries, you know, wasn't checking for our style of art at this point. Mm -hmm. So we just did our own thing, create our own art scene. Mm -hmm. So in creating your own art scene and getting to this point, talk about your style of art and where that gave you a lane to just really own your stuff, you know, like, because for most people, they go along with what has been pushed out there as far yeah. as trends and some other things and what is acceptable, per se, in the art industry, but you've created your own lane, per se. Yeah, I study other artists, mm -hmm. um, so I don't do what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I try to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Expressionism is probably my favorite thing to do right now. And then I try to evolve and change every year. I think an artist should reinvent themselves at least yearly. Mm -hmm. And so I probably work on probably about four or five different styles in a year. Okay. And then I move into another style. Because if you notice art, like you say, a lot of artists copy what's coming out mm -hmm. and doing this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm usually the one getting copied all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I got to move on. I look cliche because right. everybody else uses my, my concepts and my styles and my right. um, and all that stuff so I got to kind of it kind of forced me to evolve right yeah. right so talk so in and knowing the name of this this space Peter Street Station Peter Street has been a place for all creatives mm -hmm. talk about how you've been a part of that development here in this area of Atlanta um, when we first moved over here and this was uh, about 12 years ago mm -hmm. um, it wasn't no nothing over here. it was a couple of art galleries mm -hmm. it was uh, it was spin pizza my mm -hmm. homegirl Karen used to own that at the mm -hmm. spot. And we was in Mitchell Street and we used to walk all the way over here <laughs> because it was laid back and chill with right. nobody over here. Then we opened up City of Ink. Then a couple of my friends was like, it was successful. So my friend was like, yo, who next door? Nobody next door. So my friend ended up getting next door. Mm -hmm. They ended up getting a spot next to Spin. Mm -hmm. I mean, buying a slice and turning the Spin. My friends did. And then they just bought up the bars and made up most of the area. Glam Bar was over there. Mm -hmm. You know, Sabrina was yeah. over there at one point. So everybody, like our circle of friends, man, just open up business all in the same area. Mm -hmm. Rent was cheap. 
<laughs> so talk about what Peter Street actually means to the city of Atlanta. Not just Casterbury Hills, mm -hmm. but just the city of Atlanta. Like, is this the place where people need to come and like find themselves or find their identity, as well as find the best art and tattoos and all of these other things that they can find in this area? Well, I mean, the area constantly changing and reinventing itself every. It's like every couple of years, as new businesses come, and you know, old ones go out sometimes. So, I mean. We, we know about this is the middle of Atlanta and mm -hmm. Castleberry Hill is mostly owned by black people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a black owned Renaissance area. It's no, mm -hmm. I don't know any other city, I mean, other other place in Atlanta, they got more black businesses all on one strip. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a very special thing because you get to see black entrepreneurs come together, working together, and it's just a beautiful thing. It's inspiring to me because mm -hmm. I'm a business owner, so I love to see new businesses come, young people come in. And, open up business is pretty dope <laughs> right right and it's been dope i've been in atlanta for about 10 years you've known that um i've mm -hmm. been one of your <laughs> biggest clients and supporters around here in castleberry hills and just in general so and for me talk about the connection with the auc being around in this area and how that generation is coming in and accepting and being a part of Atlanta because most of those students aren't from Atlanta. Yeah, so yeah. are you guys giving them the real Atlanta or are you giving them what's grown in Atlanta for the most part? Oh, we try to give them the real Atlanta when mm -hmm. the, uh, when they come over here usually to do business like get tattoos and stuff. So we use tattooing as the hook to bring them into culture, into art. Because mm -hmm. most people, young people, don't really know much about art or fine art or gallery mm -hmm. life. Right. So, um, Tattooing is always attract younger people, and then while you get them, then you can kind of feed them what art really is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to do. We mm -hmm. try to get them. I mean, they support us. I mean, I don't think we'd probably be in business if they went close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they support us, and um, and we try to give them as much realness as possible. You know, we don't sugarcoat it for the young people. Right, right. And and, and talk about how you're not losing your your client base because most of us have grown with you mm -hmm. and we're still there and we're still yeah. supporting you and we don't feel out of touch yeah. you know what i'm saying because you know how some people can outgrow yeah. their fans i'm a fan so um <laughs> so so talk about how you've worked to keep that identity of who you are and what people loved about you in the beginning um i just try to stay close to the people as possible i mean i like to be touchable Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like people to be able to reach me, touch me, see me walking. Like, I'm an everyday human being like mm -hmm. everybody else. So I don't look at myself on the level higher or, you know, higher than nobody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My whole goal is just to work hard mm -hmm. and I hope to inspire a few people. Mm -hmm. And that's how I live my life. I mean, and then I try to make sure with my client base, I try to make sure I give them the best in customer service. That's right. my number one thing. Right. Like, I love to make sure that my clients be smiling, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. Like That's that. good. Um, so for you in this space, talk about what that looks like for you growing in the future. Once you complete this Peter Street station, what's next for Maya Bailey? Uh, more real estate. Okay. More real estate, more developing things for artists in our community, more businesses, you know. Uh, it's about ownership right now. Mm -hmm. So it's more about not just uh, getting a building, but owning the building that you're in, so it can, you know, you so like a lot of times you can rent a black building if you're a business and then you got to fix the building up mm -hmm. and then use all your money fixing it up. Then all of a sudden, what if you and the landlord fall out or something happened and you got to move out? You don't get that stuff back. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing now is like really showing uh, people that ownership is you know the thing. Like this abandoned, this building was abandoned since the '80s, mm -hmm. and then by the time we probably finished, it was probably worth probably 1.5 mil. You know what I'm saying? So wow. yeah, pretty. Pretty easy, mm -hmm. you know, because all we doing is recycling the old stuff like we created, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it ain't like we had to buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, the building is old. We took the ceiling down and used mm -hmm. the wood to build everything out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we're actually in the midst of work being done. We smell it. We see mm -hmm. it. We're a part of it. The energy is in here and it's amazing. So for you, Maya, what has always been your inspiration behind everything you've done, from your art to being a businessman, to being a family man, all of those things? Uh, I think my number one inspiration is to dream of having free time. <laughs> like I really have a, I really got a lifestyle I want to live in mm -hmm. the future, and so I'm working up towards that. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, I mean, I really want to sit back and just kind of chill and be a daddy and a grandfather. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I really want to do right now is mm -hmm. just buy a little time so I can spend time with my kids and, mm -hmm. and be a grandfather with my, my grandbabies. Mm -hmm. 
That's all I really want to do right now. That's my inspiration, man. Work hard. So, you know, I'm like, you ever heard the old saying, um, it's the, it's, it was the ant and the grasshopper? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in outworking everybody. So, by the time it's time for me to chill, I'm really chilling. I don't like, I'm, I'm not a vacation type of person. Mm -hmm. I want a permanent vacation. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, I don't right. want to tease myself with freedom. I want full freedom. Yeah. So, I'm just setting myself up so I don't have to work if I don't want to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole goal. It's not having to physically have to do work all the time. I've been working since my whole life. So, mm -hmm. like, I had never had a break. So, I'm just really in the point where I can have a permanent break. So, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Like, I want that in my life as well. That's my inspiration. <laughs> my inspiration is just free time, man. I want, I want to have free time so I don't have to, uh, so I don't have to, you know, if I don't want to work, I don't have to work, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, being a business owner, everybody thinks being an artist is always fun, but I have to sell this many paintings a year. I have to sell this many illustrations a year. I have mm -hmm. to sell this many tattoos a year so I can stay open, so I can pay my employees, and mm -hmm. so I can, uh, and I can feed my family, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm really trying to take myself out of the equation and get some really hard workers in there so that same income that if I wasn't working mm -hmm. is still there. And, I, and then now, the only thing is this time that I got free to do what I want to do. Right. If I want to paint, I want to be a daddy, I want to go on a vacation, I want to chill out with my old lady, <laughs> I can do whatever I want to do. There's no time limits on it. That's my goal. That's my life. That's my inspiration. That's awesome. So talk about with, with your family. Are you working with your sons and all of your kids um, and teaching them? You know what it took for you to create what you've created now and are you planning to hand it down to them or mm -hmm. are you going to stay connected to this community to where someone else in this community will buy into this you know nah no nah, i want to i ain't selling nothing to nobody <laughs> so uh i mean really just to teach my son as much as i can be an example i've been having him over here a couple of days so he can pick up learning and everything because when i'm out of here this is his building mm -hmm. so i want him to know this building like the back of his hand you mm -hmm. know from plumbing to electric to everything, you need to know this building. I mean, you have to feel it. Because when you put in work, you feel it more. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, oh, shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm really, that's what I'm really trying to get him to, uh, to understand. Like, and I don't, just because he's my son, don't mean that he's going to start from the top. He's going to have to sweep floors and start from the bottom. That's a word. So, yeah, I don't believe in just free handouts. Mm -hmm. It's because you blood relation. You know, mm -hmm. you got to work and earn it. I love that. I love that. So talk about the importance of that in the black community. Um, are you setting an example for other black business owners and just people in general that can give their opportunities to their friends? Because we've heard Issa Rae say, you know, I, I worked with my friends in order to create what I what I have now. And I mean, she's that in Hollywood and mm -hmm. you're that in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. talk about how important it is to see that type of representation. I mean, I study other communities. The Jewish community work together. The Mexican community work together. Mm -hmm. All these different people kind of work together. You know, the Asian community work together. So for us, it's like, you know, I'm looking at these these different communities and seeing how they work and how they move. And, you know, it's inspiring to me to try to do the same thing for my people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, the whole goal is you don't want no one to stay. Some people don't want to be entrepreneurs. Some people right. want to be employees. And some right. people don't mind being employees because you need both. There's no higher level. you got to right. have everything for engine to work right mm -hmm. so but the people that want to be an entrepreneur then you you just show them how to do it from the bottom so when it's time for them to be bosses they already pay their dues they know mm -hmm. how to be a follower before they become a leader because mm -hmm. you just can't be a boss and just tell people what to do you got to get your hands dirty you got to right. break your back you got to do the same thing you got to put in the footwork so they respect you in that way mm -hmm. you can't just go around telling people what to do boss them around you and then it just sound like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, man. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you really got to break your back and really lead through an example. I believe strongly in leading through an example. You know what I'm saying? I put my money where my mouth is. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So talk about, uh, I always talk to people that I get a chance to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with about either whether or not social media helped their business mm -hmm. or whether it hurt them or if it did both. Which one did social media do for you once you developed who you were in the scene around Atlanta? How did it help you and how did it hurt you in ways? Okay. Oh, it helped me. It helped me a lot. More than it hurt me, but it helped me because, uh, I mean, as an artist, it's like, it's visual. Like, so, like, place, you know, like 
social media like Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, people just want to see videos and pictures. They mm -hmm. don't really, they, American's attention span is really low. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ooh. really, really low. So, a picture is just like, oh, I like it, or you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So, it ain't about real likes. Sometimes if you like it, you might want to spend money on it. You right, know what I'm right. So, <laughs> say, out of, say out of a thousand likes, one person call you out of a thousand, a thousand people, right, looking at it. Mm -hmm. One person is enough that you paid your bills now. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. I look at it like that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I look at it like that. But, at the same time, I see negative... Uh, I didn't see social media gas people up like they superstars. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like thinking, you know, like oh, I'm I'm the man because I got this many followers, this and that, and they be broke. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now people just looking at you be broke. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't get caught up with the social media on that aspect. I just want to show my work and mm -hmm. show and keep people update to what I'm doing mm -hmm. and hope that inspire them in some way to do the same thing in their communities. But I don't get caught up with the hype about likes and mm -hmm. all that stuff, man. So, so yeah, and, and so that would be more of the development of a different type of ego. Yeah, for, yeah. For those people. Or false ego, a false entitlement Ooh, ego. You know, yeah. a lot of times it's false entitlement because most of the time these people just it's just hype. Mm -hmm. You know, now when hype go away, what you got left? Once hype is gone, can you live it off? Mm -hmm. Like you know, my whole thing is like I look at like rappers and stuff. You see like a couple of rappers be hot this year, mm -hmm. and then you got people like Scarface and like Nas or mm -hmm. Jay-Z come out, and they don't have to come out all the time being in your face because they built so much of a strong legacy when they drop something, people pay attention to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like they're not trendy. Mm -hmm. It's just like they're making classic materials. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I'm looking at it. So talk about how music and art blends for you. Um, you know what? You know what? Uh, I've been really trying to keep separate from that. Okay. But this, with Peter Street Station, we're going to bring that together in, okay. a, in a nice marriage. And the only reason I didn't really dabble into anything music related because I'm really I, I seen what the music industry do to people, okay. and I see more negative than positive about the music industry. Mm -hmm. You know, I seen it turn women into things, and I seen it turn men into things, and mm -hmm. I seen egos broke. I seen people mm -hmm. chasing stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, people living off of dreams that might don't manifest you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so it's just like you know i just seen i don't know it's a lot of snakes in that business so i mm -hmm. kind of stay away from it so with, when i bring in music here it's going to be this extension of our scene it's going to be cultivated by us mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's not going to be tainted by the industry i'm not really big on music industry i really despise it i think it's one of the reasons that uh black people in the situation they're in now hmm. that's a word so in closing, mm -hmm. is there anything else you want to share about the manifestation of all of this for you uh, that you want to share with Atlanta? I'm just thankful that I got some people helping me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's the number one thing is that like um, we always, can, black people as, a, as black community, a lot of times we complain all the time. Like, we don't got this and that. And then when somebody actually trying to do something, then you see how many people really show up to get their hands dirty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So it's just like, I'm really trying to show that we don't really need a whole bunch of outsiders to step in mm -hmm. and save us. We can do stuff on our own, man. We got a bunch of talent and we created people. You don't need to have a lot of money. All you need is a lot of people with that believe in one dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it'll manifest. Mm -hmm. Because if everybody got on the same path, that's our problem. A lot of times everybody on the same old stuff and we don't direct our energy into one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to be the king now or this person now. Everybody might have a time to shine, mm -hmm. but if everybody working on focus on one person at a time, mm -hmm. then you'll see how fast the community grows. It's, it, so, like for example, after this finish, and somebody say, "I got an idea," and that's my turn to step in and mm -hmm. bring people together and help the next person, so they can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's reminding me of this documentary on organized noise, uh -huh. where they talk about how they created what they created and. And it bloomed and blossomed into what it was. So, yeah, I love the way that that sounds. So, yes, Dawn here with the Atlanta Voice and here with artist Maya Bailey. We Thank are you, in his Peter Street station smelling the wood and all of that's around here that they are fixing up to prepare to release out to the city of Atlanta. On Friday, 23rd. That's the, that's the uh, sneak preview of Peter Street Station. Mm -hmm. And that'll be the city's 11th year anniversary show. And that'll be in April? No, this month. This next month. Yeah. This month. This month. 23rd. This month, the twenty third. Yeah, Y'all heard Friday. That? Yeah. That's Friday. like soon. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we don't sleep. <laughs> That's why we don't sleep. We're working hard to That's make sure it's beautiful. So imagine how it looks now and right. then come back on Friday, twenty third, and just be 
mind blown at how this team put together this beautiful show. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask our shooter, Mr. Etoro, to get a shot of this so that we can add that to this so y'all can see the proof in the pudding because yeah. we'll be back here on the 23rd what? to showcase that. Watch this. We got to do a follow up. Yeah, we'll have to. So you got to see it looking now. Have this is the first look. Working. <laughs> and then when you see it after the artwork is hung up and the lights are here, mm -hmm. it's going to be a beautiful thing, man. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in.